Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm very pleased because we have a new storyteller this week. Her name is Juliana Marine and she lives in Colombia in South America. The story she's going to tell you is from Mexico. Mexico has the US to its north and two Central American countries, Guatemala and Belize, to its south. As you may know, our current theme is trickster stories. And Juliana has a lively story for us about a boy and a devil. I wonder which one of those two characters you think is the trickster, the boy or the devil? Aha! Have a listen and see if you were right. Before we begin, Mexico has a volcano which has the Aztec name of Popocatapetl, which means smoking mountain. I wonder if you can say the word Popocatapetl it's a bit of a tongue twister. See how fast you can say it. While we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Popocatepetl. Popocatepetl. Ready? Off you go. Well, hello there, grown-ups and super great kids stories fans. As you probably know, we depend on your generosity and support to keep making this podcast. If you subscribe and join the Owlets Club, you'll get access to all sorts of lovely extras like subscriber-only episodes, early and ad-free episodes, as well as a newsletter from Story Owl, word puzzles, book recommendations, ooh, and film footage of our live shows. To support Super Great Kids Stories and join the Owlets Club, just click subscribe in Apple Podcasts or visit patreon.com forward slash super great kids stories. Hello, super great kids. I'm back. How did you get on with the tongue twister? Popocatapetl, pop, 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 <laughs> It's so hard. Keep practicing. You now know the name of one of Mexico's volcanoes and its second highest peak. Now, it's time to welcome our new storyteller, Juliana, with her trickster tale from Mexico. Hola. Hello. I am Juliana Marin, and I come from Colombia, and I love stories. I've always loved stories, but I never knew you could be a storyteller until I discovered that in my city, there was a school for storytelling called Viva Palabra. So I joined the school. And I loved it. But I also loved traveling. And in the middle of school, a friend of mine said that she wanted to travel through Mexico, all through Central America, back down to Colombia. Did I want to join her? Yes, I wanted to join her. We ended up spending five months in Mexico. Mexico is one of my favorite countries in the world. The people are so friendly. Everywhere is so beautiful. And it's so full of stories. And one of the stories that I tell is a story that comes from Mexico. Are you ready? Listos? Okay, then. So we're going to start like all good stories start with once upon a time, except that in Spanish we say, Había una vez. Once Upon a time, in the desert at the north of Mexico, a boy who set out to seek his fortune in the world. His village was very small and very, very poor, and there certainly wasn't work for him. And so he set off to search for the big city. Oh, but it was so hot in the desert. He was tired and thirsty and hungry. 
and he sat to rest under the shade of a tree. When suddenly, oh, that was strange. This man was coming by. He'd never seen the man before. Well, granted, he was now rather far away from his town, but this man didn't seem to be from around here. For one, he was dressed all in black. A long black cloak. Long sleeves, long pants. Who would wear this kind of clothes in the desert? It was so hot. Who was this guy? But not only that. Hmm. The boy looked him up and down. His clothes looked very fine indeed. This was a very rich man. Well, maybe he knew how to get to the big city. In fact, maybe he even needed a boy to do some work for his mansion. For sure, he lived in a mansion. And so the boy jumped up, smoothed his hair, tried to look as presentable as possible, and said, <clears throat> Hello, buenas, excuse me, senor. And the man stopped. He hadn't even noticed the boy there. What do you want? he said. I am looking for work. I am a very hard worker. I can make tortillas. I can cook. I can clean. And I am very, very smart. Do you need anybody to help you at your mansion? Hmm, said the man, looking the boy up and down. Actually, now that you mention it, it would be very nice to have someone to... Organize my library, dust my books, clean my house, and make food. Yes, yes, that would be a very good idea. In fact, I have a small room that you could sleep in. You're small enough to fit there, and I could give you a gold coin a week. <gasps> the boy tried to not show the surprise on his face. A gold coin a week? <gasps> Oh, that was more money than his family made probably in three months. That would be amazing. And the man had mentioned library. Oh, yes, sir, I would do that. I would do, I would, I would be the best worker you could possibly have. Well, said the man, first of all, though, do you know how to read? Of course I do, said the boy. I love to read. That's why this is the perfect job for me. No, said the man. No. I need a boy who does not know how to read at all. Goodbye. And the man kept walking. The boy was left in shock. What do you mean he didn't want a boy who knew how to read? Normally people paid more for someone who was smart and could read and had studied, and, and this didn't make any sense at all. And it was his dream job. He couldn't just let it get away. And one gold coin a week. <gasps> hmm. Well, his mother had always told him that people who love to read became smarter. And if this man didn't want someone who knew how to read, maybe he wasn't that smart. And maybe, just maybe, he could trick him. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir, said the boy, running after the man. What do you want? I already told you no. Yes, yes, yes. But, you see, I have a twin brother, you see. He looks exactly like me. He's further ahead down the road. The only difference is that he, well, he, he's not very smart at all. He's a good worker, yes, he's a very good worker, but he never learned how to read. I tried to teach him. I tried to teach him how to read and write. He never wanted to. All he wanted to do was to cook and clean and work hard, but he never paid any attention to books whatsoever. If you meet him along the road, maybe he'll be the right person for the job. Hmm, we'll see, said the man, and he kept on walking. <sighs> oh, I hope this works, I hope this works, I hope this works. The boy ran off into the trees, and he changed his shirt. He had one extra shirt. 
but he changed his shirt so that he would be wearing a different color, and he messed his hair up so that it looked all messy, and he put a little bit of dirt on his face, and he raced ahead on the path, and he sat down on a rock, munching on some stick. And soon, the man dressed in black came around the corner and saw the boy sitting there. Are you the boy who does not know how to read? Uh Uh-huh, said the boy. Well, would you like a job? Uh Uh-huh, said the boy. And he followed the man. Now the sun was starting to go down, and the desert was no longer quite so hot. But it was strange. Oh, the rocks were the colors of the setting sun. And as they got deeper into the desert, these stagnant yellow pools of water started appearing and vents of steam coming up from the rocks. And the boys started getting uneasy. They were in the middle of nowhere. This didn't seem like a place for a rich man to have a great big mansion. And then, then, they got to this great big rock. The man touched the rock and muttered some strange words under his breath, and the rocks opened up and revealed a tunnel that led deep into the rocks. Uh Uh-oh. Now the boy started realizing that following this random stranger into the middle of nowhere might not have been a good idea at all. Now he was a smart kid, and he felt he was pretty good at taking care of himself, but he realized that he was entering a world where he knew nothing. He had to keep his eyes open and watching, but now what was he going to do? He couldn't just run off. He was in the middle of nowhere. There was nowhere to run to. And so, hoping that this wasn't the worst mistake he'd ever made in his life, he followed the man into the darkness. (laughs) The rocks closed back up, and then... (gasps) Books! Lights appeared. He didn't know where they came from. And there were books from the floor to the ceiling. Everywhere there were books piled up on the chairs, on the tables. There were books piled up on the bed. There were books everywhere. And it was all so (coughs) dusty. (coughs) Oh, my goodness. This was a place that hadn't been cleaned in ages. But it was huge. Yeah, he'd been right. This man was very rich, and it was a massive mansion, just that it was under the ground. There's the broom, said the man. There's the kitchen. Go on, then. Start cleaning. I will go to my room. Do not disturb me. Oh, the boy looked around at the books. His eyes were lighting up. He tried to make sure that the man didn't notice his amazement and eagerness. He didn't have very many books back at his school, which was very poor. There were only a handful. He had read all of them twice. But here were more books than he even knew existed in the world. Oh, he would read them secretly at night while the man was asleep. Oh, this was the perfect job. But He made sure to sweep and clean and dust and get everything ready. And then he had the tortillas and the beans and the cheese and the chicken. Everything was ready. And when the man came out for dinner, he was very impressed. Very good, he said. You can stay. There is your room. Good night. And the man went to sleep. And as soon as he heard that the man was snoring, the boy went and pulled out a book from the library and flipped it open and (gasps) Uh uh-oh he closed the book put it back oh no he took another book carefully opened it flipped it open Uh uh-oh put it back 
Oh, no. These were books of witchcraft. And now the boy realized that he had walked right into a trap. This man was an evil, powerful wizard. And as he took more books, oh, no. It was even worse than he thought. No, this was not just an evil, powerful wizard. This was El Diablo, the devil himself. And now the boy knew that he could not escape. Because, of course, the devil was so powerful that if he tried to run away, he would be able to find him. In fact, one of the books he'd opened had spells on how to find runaway servants. Oh, no. What would he do? Well, he realized that the only way to come out safely was to learn some magic for himself so that he could protect himself and hide. And so, being very, very careful that the devil wouldn't catch him reading, he stayed up all night reading and learning spells. There was a lot to learn. He found some books that had never been opened because these were the books that taught how to use magic for housekeeping and cleaning and cooking. And he learned those pretty easily. They were the simplest ones. And pretty soon, the tortillas were making themselves, the broom was sweeping by itself, and everything was taking care of itself, and the house was spick and span, and it was perfect, and the devil was very impressed. And the boy had much more time to read. And time passed, and he read every single book in that library. The boy was now a young man, and he had become powerful, wise. He knew all sorts of magic. And when you know magic, you become confident. And when you become confident, you become careless. And one day, he was rereading one of his favorite books, a book of spells on how to transform into different animals. And he kept on reading way past the time when the sun rose and the Diablo came out of his room to look for his breakfast and, (gasps) You! You said you didn't know how to read! Oh, you have tricked me! And the devil reached for the boy to grab him and puff! Instantly, the boy transformed himself into a tiny little mouse and dropped from the devil's hands and scurried away, trying to reach a little hole tiny in the ground where the devil wouldn't be able to reach him. Ha! You think you can get away from me like that? Who do you think I am? Poof! The devil transformed himself into a huge snarling cat and caught the mouse between his claws. Poof! The boy transformed into a white dove and flew, flew through the open door, flew through the tunnel, flew straight out into the wide open desert. Poof! The devil transformed into a hawk, screeching until he grasped the dove in its claws. And poof, the boy transformed into a heavy, heavy turtle that slipped right out of the hawk's claws and fell to the ground. And of course, nothing happened to him. He wasn't hurt because he was a turtle and he had a big, hard shell. Although maybe that's why turtles have cracked backs still to this day. Well, then the devil realized that this boy was smart. He was going to have to watch pay attention, and trick him. And so the devil transformed, poof, into an innocent little leaf, just waiting and watching to see what the turtle would do. Well, after a little while, the boy poked his head out of the turtle shell, looked around, devil was nowhere to be seen. And he started stretching out one leg, another leg, another leg, another leg, and walking slowly. The devil, (laughs) he's coming right towards me. He has no idea 
that I am here. Oh, when he gets close, I will pounce on him and I will kill him. The turtle walks slowly, slow. Oh, come on, hurry up, thought the devil. Slowly. Oh, come on, why are you taking slow? And the turtle gobbled up the leaf. The boy had known it was the devil all along. And then, poof, the boy turned back into a boy. Hey, said the devil from inside the boy's tummy. Let me out, let me out, let me out. And the boy, smiling, went to the toilet. And sure enough, he let him out. Ugh. Ever since then, they say that the devil is terrified of children, especially of the ones who love to read. Y colorín colorado, este cuento se ha acabado. That's a nice way of finishing a story. Thank you, Juliana, for sharing that story with us. Imagine knowing magic spells which would turn you into a mouse or a dove or a cat or a turtle. If you could turn yourself into anything, I wonder which animal you'd choose. An elephant or a falcon? Who knows? Maybe even a crocodile. Can you send us a picture of the animal you'd like your devil to turn into? Now. Do you know what time it is? Yes, it's time to have a dip into my bag of happies and say a big thank you to some owlets who've been joining our club and supporting our podcast. And hello to Grisha in California, who is five. Grisha has been waiting patiently to hear his name read out. Grisha and his mum have listened to nearly all of our stories and they discuss them afterwards. Some of his favourites are the Ghost of the Bloody Finger, the Baba Yaga stories and Stick Woman. I love Baba Yaga too, Grisha. Oh, I wonder if you call her Baba Yaga. And hello to new owlets Theo and George from Reading in the UK who like listening to super great kids stories on car journeys. Theo drew a picture of one of his favourite stories, The Ghost of the Bloody Finger. And hoo, 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 to Moiran, who is seven and a new member of our Owlets Club. She lives in Kinsale in County Cork in Ireland and she drew a great picture of a giant called Tess, inspired by listening to last week's story about Jack and the Two-Headed Giant. Moiran's giant is a scientist who likes using people in her experiments. Eek! I like your imagination, Moiran. And hoo, 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 and hello to new owlets Nolan, who is seven, and Lucas, who is five, from Summit in New Jersey in the US. They have just subscribed and have been loving all the bonus stories. Some of their favourites are The Ghost of the Bloody Finger and The Black Ribbon from Super Great Scary Stories. And welcome to you all who've recently joined. Thank you for your reviews on Apple Podcasts too. It puts a wag in my tail to read them. Thanks this week to the Snappy Hippie family for your kind review. And thanks to all you artists who've sent in pictures recently. You've been drawing lots of imaginative giant pictures for us to enjoy. Here are my pics of pictures for this week. Hello to Nico, who is four, from Archway in London. He drew two pictures, one of a Nancy in the Magic Pot and one of Wild Jack and the Two-Headed Giant. And hello to Zachary, who is seven, and his sister Juliet, who is three. They live in Leeds, here in the UK. Leeds is where I'm from too. Zachary has drawn a two-headed giant with spectacularly large ears. Good for listening out for children to catch and eat. Eek! And Letty, who is new to Super Great Kids Stories, has sent us a creative drawing on yellow paper of a roaring giant called Bella who has thick hair, a huge mouth filled with black teeth and gigantic legs. 
and Blake, who is nine, and her sister Jade, who is six, have each sent in giant pictures. Blake's giant has purple skin and spiky blue hair, and Jade's two-headed giant looks absolutely massive compared to the little girl standing beside him. She doesn't look very happy, but then, thinking about it, I wouldn't be happy either if a hungry ginormous giant was right next to me. Thanks for that, Jade and Blake. And thanks to nine-year-old Akriti from Bangalore in India for her wonderful giant drawing. Thanks so much, Akriti. I love your giant with spiky hair, yellow eyes and cavernous mouths. Little Jack looks so small in comparison as he plays his flute. Thank you very much for sharing your drawing with us. That's it for this week. If you'd like to see some of these super great drawings, they're on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. Do send in your pictures for us to share on Facebook with other story lovers. If you'd like to send a picture, either attach it to our Facebook Messenger or scroll to the bottom of our website at supergreatkidsstories.com. And if you live south of London and would like to hear me telling a few stories, I'm going to be telling some at our local village show in Isha in Surrey on August Bank Holiday Saturday. That's the 26th. It's just me telling the stories. There are no tickets. It's free of charge. So just come along and say hello. I'd love to meet you. And if you'd like to help Super Great Kids Stories, we'd love you to vote for us in the Listener's Choice category of the British Podcast Awards. So, if you like our podcast and would like to help, click on the link www.britishpodcastawards.com forward slash voting and enter Super Great Kids Stories. Or go to our Facebook page on our website, supergreatkidsstories.com, where you'll see the link to click. Meanwhile, do keep sharing your stories with your friends. See if you can find an easy story to tell and surprise someone by telling them your version of it. See you soon. This story was recorded at Wardour Studios in London.